Aloha YouTube, this is your boy Crypto Roots and everything currency. Straight crypto YouTubers, check us out. This is the Elon Marley podcast where we talk about everything crypto, especially everything DeFi. How you been, brother? What's going on? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Just chilling. That's what's up. That's what's up. So let's just get straight into it. No bullshit. What do you think about sushi? Yeah, let's go. What do you think about the whole sushi swap f- fiasco? Like, <laughs> what? Just, just let it on. Tell me up. What's up with that shit, man? First of all, I want to say this whole sushi thing has been a joke to me from the get go. But I will say that, man, I made a hundred percent on sushi after it crashed, <laughs> just on a fluke, but. This whole sushi thing is some of the craziest stuff that I ever seen, man. So, but you know, the craziest thing though was the dev walked away with like 13, 14 mil, right? He gave it back today. Yep, he gave it back. He, he admit that the greed got a hold of him. He admit, he admit that, and he gave it back. And I, it's a, it's a lot going on. There's different migrations. They handed down the keys. Now there's multi sig keys and. It's a lot from a developer's perspective about what's going on. But in mm-hmm. my opinion, I personally just don't have a good feeling about it. The, the, I, I, there's so many advanced developers who are like all about it, but I don't know. My, my intuition just... Well, go ahead. for me, I think if I feel like the, the brand Sushi is just done. They're going to have to rebrand if they're going to ever reinvent that, that whole... They have to change the name or something and rebrand, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's got like a stain on it. Like you can't you can't shake that shit off. <laughs> you can't shake that shit off. You know? And, it's kind and, of, and you people, know, were saying, people were saying like, the dev should have gave it back. They should have bought sushi back and bumped up the price and re- pretty pretty much reimbursed everybody versus just giving it back to the treasury. So some people are like, yo, if you really want to do us a favor, buy it all back and raise our sushi back up. Like, instead of, you know, just give it back. But um, that goes to show you, like, money money can change you. No matter how good of a person or the greatest intentions you set out to be, with that kind of money on deck, like, what would you do if you were in that dev's position? You know what I'm saying? Especially if you were, quote, unquote, a non- think about it. Think about it, though. You're the single dev who came through with this project that in no time gained $500 million in the market cap. I think more than that was locked up in the actual contract. He was probably thinking it's time for me to take my, (laughs) take my uh, compensation. And I'm, you know what? I'm not necessarily, I can get it. I can get it why he would pull that move and I can get it why he would, give it back most i would say most people wouldn't would never give it back fuck that shit i'm taking it and i'm going somewhere else yeah. but um, yeah it was cool that and you know what just i'm gonna just take two mil and i'll give the rest back yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> not just that it's that it was a clone off uniswap like uh i think his name's hayden adams or whatever like these dudes really worked on uniswap for like two or three years and then all of a sudden sushi swap comes and clones it uh, switches some shit up and then gets runs away with 13 mil like that is some of the most shady shady shit like people people are super salty about that like you're you're yeah. pretty much a scammer at that point you stole up people's hard work then you and these people these devs didn't get paid like uniswap don't, they don't get paid for making uniswap like they did it but for, i mean go ahead was it really his fault because he spent money from the dev share or did People panicked after he spent that dev share money and sold their sushi, and it was a massive sell-off. Yeah, it, it, it reminds me of Litecoin. I don't know if you remember the Litecoin days where Charlie, Char, Charlie Lee or whatever sold his shares of Litecoin, uh, and people were yeah. like, "Dude, how dare you betray us?" You know, people were just so vengeful. Like it's like, "Yo, yeah. this dude understands the game." Like you know, and oh, right. by the way, so let's let's uh, let's lead into that. Let's lead into that. In my opinion, I don't think Litecoin is ever coming back. Ever coming back. Me neither. Me you neither. Can see shit just slipping from the market cap. It's going from number yeah, me neither. to number four, number five. Nine, it's like eight, seven, eight, nine, or ten right now. Mm-mm. Lightning hasn't done. Lightning needs help. Once Charlie Lee pretty much came out and said, look, I'm paying for all Litecoin's development. 
I don't want to pay for all Litecoin's development. It's supposed to be decentralized. Leave me out of it. That's the real reason why he sold his coins, because he was tired of doing all the work. <laughs> it's like, and it was the top, you know, he was selling at the top. But, you know, for the most part, he didn't want to, he didn't want to do everything for Litecoin and, and fund all the development and all this stuff like that if it was supposed to be a decentralized project. So, yeah, and, yeah and you know, and they were talking about people, same thing contracts for this time. Who, who are like, yeah, 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 just make me rich. Yeah, 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 shut up, dev this, dev that. Just make me rich. That's all they care about. So from the, from the devs' perspective, they're like, man, like, that's all you guys care about. Like, I put more effort into getting the start up, and everybody just wants me to make them rich, like, without. Yeah, did you, I mean, that reminds me of the situation with DAG. Now, DAG is one of the coins that I've held for a minute that I really like, but there's a situation where they actually lost some partnerships because the community was too crazy and too skeptical. So when they announced the partnership, the community basically bombarded the partner, you know, with questions and blowing them up. Is this company legit? Is this company legit? Is it real? Is this partnership real? And, and the partnership, the partner decided that <laughs> they wanted to back out because it was just too much, too much publicity that they didn't want. Yeah. There's some real demons that come up in the crypto game. I mean, in my opinion, the whole market is a demon. Like, as, as much prosperity as you think there is, there's so much, so much wreckness going on that just doesn't get, the light doesn't get shined on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. There's only for a few sure, accounts sure. on crypto Twitter that are admitting their losses, that are admitting that, that they got scammed. Like, you know, there's only a few accounts that are really like, yo, I fucked up, like, you know? But you, you don't hear the rest of the people. You, and, and the way people express how they got fucked, how they got wrecked in the crypto game is very, I wouldn't say ironic, but peculiar. Because most people will never admit that they've made a mistake or they've been scammed or they've been rug pulled or whatever, right? But mm -hmm. you'll, what, what, the way I can tell when people got wrecked in this crypto game is by their responses. No, I don't deal with <laughs> yeah. that. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's too much right now. The whole industry needs to be regulated. Like, you know, like they, they, they have a whole switch of personality and it's like, you got fucking wrecked. I know it. Just yeah. fucking admit it. You got fucking so, wrecked somewhere and you don't, you don't want people to know and you're bitter about it. And the way you respond to people is just like exactly. pretty much discouraging completely. You know, I've been hearing that lately with a lot of people. I don't know if you've been hearing this a lot, but a lot of people are saying, oh, the DeFi bubble pops. DeFi's dead. I'm like, man, just because you got a rug pulled don't mean that DeFi ain't building some good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, and I would bet a lot of those people who are saying that are still are new to the game. Because if me, people like me and you who've been in the game three plus years, we can see that every time people said it was dead, it was never dead. It only came back stronger. Yo, Bitcoin's dead. That whole crypto shit's dead. Ethereum, even when Ethereum, Ethereum's dead. Yeah, I'm like, you guys still, you guys Still hollering that Bitcoin's going to zero? Come on now, y'all. Come on, man. Y'all got to stop that one. Uh, yeah, for real. I mean, like, I, I, I honestly see governments buy into Bitcoin more than they buy into DeFi projects. Like, like they, they, you know, like if, if these governments are really going to use Bitcoin as a reserve currency, uh, use crypto, as, they're going to go for Bitcoin. Like, at least in my opinion, they're not going to go for these brand new projects that are just coming up like no way it's, you know so they're going to go with the oldest oldest crypto in the game which is bitcoin so I, the whole bitcoin thing ain't over yet it's just that it's not flexible it's not flexible and and i looked more into it and even wrapping your bitcoin is unsafe for the most part uh for right now yeah. all the ren btc is held by one account holder over a hundred million dollars worth of btc is held by one account holder and it's like yo that is not they're, you know, they're saying they're going to release the keys and make it multi-sig, but it's like, yo, it's really not that safe at this point to be putting your Bitcoin in Ethereum. You're actually, you're taking a yeah, lot It's of centralized. Money. It's definitely centralized. Well, you know, like I said before, like, you know, it's centralized, but in, in the long term, like, people kind of trust certain companies and they don't mind centralization as much. Now, in the long run, I think, of course, decentralization is going to be what prevails over everything. You know, but as far as like a lot of people who throw their money, you can see it with people throwing their money on these centralized exchanges and leaving it there and getting hacked. And, you know, the the greed kind of makes people lack on the safety a little bit at times.
All right, so please admit, have you been rug pulled so far in this DeFi game? Have I, uh, you know what? I will say I, I lost money on damn, um, I bought one of them coins. Yeah, I did. Uh, I don't know if it was a rug pull or not, but I know that shit crashed. Uh, basically, just gave money away. Kimchi. Kimchi. I, I felt kimchi, kimchi was taking yeah, off the was... like just you uh, siphoning off the hype of uh, sushi swap. Like I really like didn't that shit just come out yeah. right after sushi swap came out? Came out. Yeah, it was. It was in that two or three days where you had a coin dropping every hour, and uh, kimchi was one of them. And you know, I was literally when I went into it, I was kind of expecting like, yo, this might not work out. It 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 might ten x, it might go to zero, and you know that that thing went to zero. <laughs> now let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. And in your yep. opinion, this is not to um, this is not to you know put you on the spot, but this is you're an outlet, you're a voice for people. You know, what I'm saying that are listening. So with that kimchi investment, I mean, let not let me. With that kimchi, were you investing or were you gambling? Were you were you gambling? Were you no? Trading, I was gambling. Were you investing? Be honest. All right, I was gambling. That's a lot different from me looking at a chart, finding a good entry, or looking at a project and seeing if I want to mine it or if I want to uh, farm it or whatever. No, that was a lot different. That was just hey, this project doesn't do nothing. <laughs> this is a game right now. And it's a game where I was like, you know what? Hey, and well, like I said, I didn't put that. I didn't put well, you that. You just said it. Like this is, might 10x, you know? this might not. That sounds like a gamble to me, you know? And no, that's what I'm saying. That's what that's. It was a gamble. That's I was and, as I'm putting the money in there. I'm knowing it's. You know what I mean? Yeah, and let's talk about that because I see you. I personally see you as a crypto investor. Like from the way you talk, the way you yeah. analyze coins, the way you do your due diligence. I see you as an investor. So what about you making a gamble and not an investment? What, what happened to you at that point? Were you caught up in the hype? Because a lot of people were, including myself. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, what, what happened it was all, from an investor to a gambler in that trade or that moment or that, that, that investment or gamble? To be honest with you, it was fun. <laughs> you know, it was like, hey, um, you know, everybody was having fun with it on Twitter. And for me, that's, you know, that's how I had to look at it as far as it being a gamble. You know what I mean? Like when you gamble and you go to the casino, you're not supposed to be in there trying to make a living. You know, you're supposed to be in there having fun. And for me, that was like, psychologically, there was a huge separation from what I normally do as an investor. You know what I mean? I can't say that I got greedy because at the end, Hey, I didn't really expect that it was going to work well, out, to be well, honest with you. <laughs> doesn't greedy gambling kind of go hand in hand? Aren't they like brothers and sisters? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, like, I mean, it, right? if you're, because you can gamble and have fun with it and, and just be having fun with it. You know what I mean? And, but and, and, if and, you're, if you start to get greedy, I would have never thrown like a full Bitcoin in there and been like, oh, I'm expecting that this is finna double, triple. You know, I'm finna take all the money. You know what I mean? But it's funny that it's funny that you say gambling is fun. Because yes. now that you say that, I really think crypto investing is boring. Like if we're like we're really like crypto investing is boring. You have to spend hours and hours That's and hours. It got, Go ahead. It got fun for a second. You know what I mean? It got it got real fun. It was like, look. <laughs> if this is fun right now pick a food coin and hope you get lucky you know what i mean like i wasn't there, actually right? looking at it like damn near. Hey, this, yeah like this is that's substantial you know what i mean absolutely absolutely i wouldn't say i fucked up on pasta but i spent more more more, more on gas uh mm -hmm. uh with pasta than i than i made with it in fact the pasta i farmed i left it on there because it wasn't worth the gas taking it out that's that's when i really had to go to sleep like yo you know what? You you actually need to slow down, bro. You, you need to slow down because I thought pasta was going to like at least hit ten bucks, and I was going to cash out. That shit hit like two cents, three cents, or something, one cent. And I'm like, yeah, that's how that's how kimchi was. I was like, oh, this might hit ten dollars, but it hit two cents, three cents. I was like, oh well. But see, that's why that's why, like I said, before I even went into it, 
I was kind of already like, because because even my my subscribers know they're like, bruh, why you invest in some bullshit? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what's up already. Even you, it's like, bro, we've been in the game for a long time, but it's like, shit gets boring, man. And that that was kind of fun to actually do all that. A lot of people got pissed off and they started saying this is garbage, whatever and stuff like that. But I mean, oh, I think oh, that's because a lot of people oh. lost. Anytime a lot of people lost money, it's garbage. You know what I mean? All right, let, let's the, the the let's let's talk about that. There's so much salt in the game right now. What 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 dish can I make? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much salt in the game. I can make any dish I want. Um, but a lot of people that are salty are usually new investors. Not only were the gas fees high. Yes. I mean, you got to think about that. Think, just imagine how many people got wrecked. They bought at the top with high gas fees and they couldn't pull out if they were staking mm. or farming or really couldn't sell because of high gas fees. So, I mean, you're talking about, when you're talking about mm -hmm. money down the drain, I mean, damn, that's, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I would, the majority of people that got wrecked are new investors. And that's how I know, that's how I feel confident we're getting into a bull run is because of how many new investors are getting wrecked because they just don't understand what this game's really about, right? Like I got mentees, I got a few mentees who saw my ZZZ videos and hit me up and be like, yo, I'm like, have you ever heard of crypto? Nah, I just saw your ZZZ videos. How do I get that? And I'm like, bro, you just skip Bitcoin. You skipped Ethereum. You went straight to ZZZ. Yeah. You know, I'm like, damn. So yeah, much for something, you to learn. That's something that I tell people. Yeah, that's something that I tell people all the time in the group too. It's like, um, you know, somebody will call out one of these coins that's kind of a, one of those gamble coins you know, and they say, hey, it's on Uniswap. And then somebody goes, how do I buy it on Uniswap? And I say, hey, if you don't know how to use Uniswap, this ain't for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, get, don't get involved with this if you don't even know how to use Uniswap. Somebody left the comment, was like, yo, how do I, how do I buy uh, the ZZZ with Bitcoin? And I'm like, nah, you can't do that, bro. Like, <laughs> like you, yeah, no, there's you know, oh, there's no. so much to learn. There's so much, it's like, how do I buy ZZZ with Bitcoin? Yeah, you know, I mean, that that lightweight did become a problem because then, you know, like it it builds up this whole this whole get rich quick mindset with the newcomers who come into the space and they tend to think, hey, you know what? All this person did was throw a thousand dollars in a smart contract and now they got a hundred K because it a hundred X, you know, and yeah. they think that that's all they have to do. Yeah, you know, and money it does create Two thousand on Wi-Fi and it went to thirty-eight thousand people. So people are like, "Yo, Roots, how do I do that? How do I do that?" And I'm like, "Yo, if I would have told you to do that at two thousand, you would have thought I was crazy. You would have thought I was crazy." Same, same here. <laughs> same here. People is like, I told people, you know, I made a video. Hey, buy DOS at less than a penny. You know, third of a penny, and then the thing went to twenty-eight cents. You know, and everybody said, how, how, how do I find a coin like that? You know, how do I do that? This and that. To you, it was overnight. But to me, that was seven months ago when I first bought that coin and waited for it to pop. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's where the, that's, that's called investing. That is a smart yeah. investment move. You did. So that's, that's where the investing really pays off. And other people like, yo, you just got lucky gambling. Some people may see it as that. Like, you just got lucky yeah. gambling. It's like. No, now you have to do your research, believe in it, and then survive in the FUD when everybody thought, hey, mainnet's not coming. It looks like they scammed. The project's done. You know, you got to, no, nah, it's not done. It's all right. My investment's cool. My The price, the value of my investment keeps going down, but I'm not going to sell. You know, like, I got faith in this. You know, that stuff is psychologically draining. You know, Absolutely. if you if you get in, that's something you're going to have to, like, learn how to manage. You know. and, and for people like me and you who are crypto influencers, we, we got, at least from my perspective, we, there's two different sides of the game I'm feeling. I'm a crypto influencer, mm -hmm. mentor, whatever, teacher, educator. So my heart goes out to new people getting in the game. And because I want Same the best for them, I want them to have the best experience. I want them to learn as much. And I want, hopefully yeah. they make some money, right? But on the yeah. other hand, I'm really honestly relying on their fucking ignorance when it comes to the markets, you know? I like when it comes to the markets, I can rely on a bunch of new people who don't want the, don't know what the fuck they're doing, who are just gambling, following any YouTube channel, and just like that's, throwing money at some shit. Well, you know what? That money goes to that's me. every so, you know, and da, 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 da. yeah, that's 
So it's two sides of the coin. Like I want to look out for you, but at the same time, I need your ignorance to make a profit when it comes to the markets. Right. So that's one thing that people don't understand is like, you know, in markets, everybody's like, oh, I lost money. I lost money. No, you didn't. Somebody took it from you. So it's like, I tell, you know, if you watch me, I appreciate you watching me. So I'm going to show you how to not get your money took and, and show you how to take money from other people. But it's not called stealing money or snatching money from other people. It's called trading, you know, like, so... Yeah, I- you know, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I was listening to a trading podcast the other day and it says your confidence doesn't get lost as a trader. It just gets transferred to another trader. Like when it comes to losing mm-hmm. trades, like how do you break out? It's like your confidence doesn't get lost. It gets, your confidence gets transferred to another trader. Yeah, that's the thing about that people don't really understand about this game too is like they they want to hop on all the time. Why is the price dumping? Why is the price well people are selling. You know, <laughs> that's how markets work. You know, and if uh you want to sell before everybody else, that's what you have to do. If something's absolutely tanking, then you got to sell before everybody else. You know, you got to or when everything's going up, you got to take your profit before everyone else. That's the whole point. Like that's why people focus on that's why, that's why I focus on technical analysis, even though I'm not a day trader. Word. You know Word. what I mean? Because those charts can show you, like, the, it's showing you what the market psychology is at that moment in time. You know what I mean? What are the averages of this market psychology? What are, what are people feeling and thinking based on what, what they're actually doing? You know, they're actually buying or they're actually selling, you know? And... Yeah, you know, I think a lot of things get confused, confused by people, and you know. With this DeFi trade is going on, one of the riskiest things you can do right now when it comes to especially a lot of these DeFi projects, the, one of the riskiest things you can do is market buy. Why is that? When, it, when so many yield farming things come out, it's almost a safer way to just farm it than actually buy it. Because the people who are buying it are taking much more of a risk of it dropping. People who are yield farming, eh, a couple gas money, a couple bucks in gas, right? Like... It's a, it, I see some of these yield farming things as, as a risk management, like way of, you know, like, yo, like I didn't pay for this. I got this free because I got that for free. Then I got that for free. Right. And you market right. bought all right. that, bro. You know? Right. So, That's why it's, it's that like, even, you know, even, um, what's his name? Uh, Cord, what's his name? Corgi? Wi-Fi's a uh, creator? Yeah. Uh, and Andre Cronahey. Andre Cronahey, I always say his name retarded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, he came out, you know, he came out in a couple of interviews and he's like, look, people, um, don't buy Wi-Fi. You know, he was like, it's it's meant to be farmed, you know, it's meant to be, you know, and he but people are gonna buy it anyway, you know. And they're gonna speculate that the price is gonna go up, which is, you know, it creates a secondary market for it, you yeah. know, which in return could actually hurt the project. Who, who would know, who would, who would have known that don't buy Wi-Fi, don't risk your money in these smart contracts, it has zero financial value, and I test and prod, who would know that that would be the golden thing to, 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 to boost your coin up damn near to 40K, right? Right. Like, like telling That's what I'm saying. I'm like, bro, everybody no is just... I, 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 I learn how to drive on the freeway, like I test in production, like <laughs> crazy. Yeah, and then you look at the contract and you go, there's really about a, almost a billion dollars locked in here? What's going on? You yeah, know? I mean, and, but it's not, it, but don't, at this point, you have so much of the community double checking, rechecking, looking at the code, double, like, so it, it's, it's past that point now where it's just this guy, no, like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's as legit as it could ever be, like, when it comes to, you know, uh, just all being audited, because you have to understand just because, like there's certain companies or corporations that do an official audit, but there's a bunch of thousands more developers who, who just audit for the sake of it because fuck, that's just what they enjoy mm-hmm. doing. So some of these projects, yes, yeah. they haven't been audited, but you still have a bunch of Ethereum developers looking at the code. They just aren't certified or don't belong to a corporation. They just, I mean, that's why, that's why I came around to Wi-Fi is because, you know, like looking at, how this thing really just became like a community project, just like Bitcoin. 
you know, where it was just one dude who's like, hey, look, I created something. And then everybody was like, huh, let me look at that. Hey, maybe you can add this. Maybe you can fix that. And then you've seen the development pick up, you know, a hundred times. You know, it's like, I think when Wi-Fi first came out, it's like every time I went to the website, there was something else added to it. You know, like it was being audited by all these people. And then, you know, you see the main the main uh, developer being 100% real about what's going on with the project, you know? Uh, absolutely. So I just thought that that made it. And his story you know. is a pretty great story too, you know? And um, it's, it's a new paradigm. It's a new paradigm. From now on, that is the new standard of decentralization and governance. And even even farm harvest dot finance farm you know they're taking everything's going to be somewhat of a wi-fi clone from here on out pretty much and th things are going yeah. to be compared to wi-fi from, from now on like and there's as as there's nothing people can do because once because the centralization is at the at the real core of it it's about fairness it's about fairness and there's different types of fairness i guess but yeah we're talking like, about the most absolute fair project so far, so far. I don't know how you can get any more fair, but believe me, somebody may get even more fair, right? But that's what is, that's the true yeah. value is absolute fairness, absolute decentralization. And that's why, pe that's why things are being produced. That's why people are moving and working. And, you know, it's because they, not just that, some people don't get paid. A lot of people don't get paid, but the fact that they feel valuable and that they actually can contribute and their, it actually, their voice actually matters and yeah. they get paid to vote. For Wi-Fi, you get paid to vote. You stake your Wi-Fi, you get Y-curve token. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and like, so it's, 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 it's- Also, lot. I want to add one more thing too. I would say, I also just think that, you know, I think the, what Wi-Fi has is a product that's actually useful to people. You know what I mean? That putting your money into one contract and that contract has bots that's going to do this and do that for you is the first of its kind in, in DeFi. You know what I mean? And I think, I think, I think that's, that's what also gives it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it almost, you still got to understand Ethereum. You still got to understand MetaMask and transactions, but it almost gives the mom and pop. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to know, you have to know how to use it. Like for me, I didn't know the first time I went to it, I didn't get into it because I didn't know what was going on. The web type, the website was too damn simple. You know, I needed to <laughs> like, and I, and I've been in crypto, you know, I was just like, Oh, hold on. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit new to this liquidity farming thing. And you know, what's going on here. I see all these warning signs. I'm good. You know, I don't want to put thousands of dollars into this thing, you know? Yeah. And no one saw that coming. No one saw that coming. And I was just lucky enough to be watching a crypto YouTuber who was talking about Wi-Fi. And then I went and did my due diligence and I'm like, yo, this is, this is, it. and then I, I looked at the price. I, I went to sleep. I woke up the next day. It was a thousand dollars more. I'm like, all right, I'm missing out on this. So like, you know what? I, I like, I'm going take, I'm taking a risk right now, but damn. And it was one of the, it's quite possibly one of the best decisions I've ever made when it comes to uh, crypto investing. Um, so that, that gave me a lot of confidence. And now I realize, wow, like you can stake the Wi-Fi to make more Wi-Fi. Like the game, they, they, they're just, there's Wi-Fi insurance. They just came out with a, stable credit usd coin i don't know man it's hard to keep up but i like the fact that yeah. i can't keep up i'll be honest i like the fact that i can't keep up because in, you know in all reality it gives me something to do like i'll be telling exactly be telling same here it's like, like, like i gotta study i gotta study I, there's ave there's all this shit coming out yeah. and i can't even keep up i like that life though it's not same, boring same here i like that because i'm just like whoa when, when i get you know, a bunch of projects that I'm looking at or a bunch of DeFi and stuff like that. And from day to day to day, it's just so many new things and so many, you know, different stuff going on. I'm just like, hey, this is when I know that the research that I already did is about to pay off. You know, all I got to sit, all I got to do is sit back, keep accumulating, you know, yeah. and 
everything okay. is coming to fruition. All the work is being done. It's moving at the speed of light, you know. Yeah, and I, I was watching I was watching a YouTube channel, uh, Box Mining. I don't know if you heard of Box Mining, the Asian dude. Oh, yeah. You heard of him? Yeah, Box Mining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know he's been going overtime, and he, he like his audience is like, "Yo, you should you should kind of chill out, bro. You looking a little tired. You looking a little tired." And he's just like, "Yeah, I've been studying DeFi nonstop day and night." And he was like, "All right, that's kind of a little ridiculous. Like, take a rest, dude." But the way he expressed it, he's like. I cannot miss this opportunity. These kind of golden rushes, bull runs happen like once every seven, maybe five, seven, ten years. Like they don't happen all the time. He's like, if yeah. I take the time now and lose a little sleep because to learn more about where all this, he believes that it's going to pay off in the end. And you know, and it's like, yo, don't miss this opportunity because this is not going to yeah. last forever. This is going to get normal. Definitely, you know. This is going to be the saying about it. And I, and I, and I tend to agree. This is going to be the last bull run for sure. So? I think so because I just feel like it's going to be to that point, like we're two or three notches below mainstream, you know, and part of going mainstream is going to be quiet for a little bit, you know, and you know, by that time it's going to be like investing in, you know, investing into Google by the time it's already on your smartphone. You know, like the way things are moving so fast and how these new companies are picking up technology and now how the governments are hopping on top of it. Oh, I mean, yeah. You, you better believe that you don't want to miss this opportunity. The day you can pay your taxes and Wi-Fi is, 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 when, is when that's the game you miss. You know, I don't know. It's, it's going to be crazy. No, okay, okay, okay. The day, the day that your taxes automat automatically come out of the smart contract, that's when we know. We we did it. <laughs> yeah, that whole tax thing is going to be really interesting because, um, people, you know, certain pools, certain staking pools, certain farms, or cryptocurrencies, they are already taxed. One percent goes to the developer yeah. fee. One percent goes to the treasury. One percent, like, so you're already kind of getting taxed on some of these coins that you're trading, and some of them, such as Boa, you get taxed. You get taxed one percent for every time you transfer it and every time you sell it. Every time you send it, you get taxed. Every time you sell it, you get taxed. So, like, it, the taxes are, are already in the system. Like, with some of the, and that's because what taxes are are like a burn rate, essentially, because they 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 put the you know the Federal Reserve they put money out there, they print the money, right? But the taxes is the the way it burns it. They burn the money by taking the money back from you through taxes to kind of balance out the system. So really like once you start to understand token economics, you can start to really understand the, the economics of the US dollar. And you realize, yo, I'm going deep into the token economics. Like people like me and you be like, did they have a pre-sale? What was the liquidity mining? Like how did they distribute the token? How many tokens are being released this week? That, you know, and it's like, well, what's the what they got? What are, when are the tokens getting released? What type of tokens are they? <laughs> and, and, and it's a big deal because you can have a solid project, but your token economics can be fucked up, bro. Like you can have a solid idea. And I'll give you two examples. Two examples that I think token economics. I have to uh, do when you get done. Go ahead. Solid, like hella solid, revolutionary. But the token economics fucks it up for as far as an investment uh, vehicle. And the first one would be Ooh. the first one would be Dot Polka Dot. I think Polka Dot is obviously revolutionary. Oh, yeah. da, da, da. But the token economics of Dot is fucked up, bro. If you really looked into Dot, they 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 got scammed, they got hacked, they got pre sales, ICOs, investors. Trying, it's so nasty. And you, if everyone thought Dot was going to take off, Dot hasn't even passed what six dollars, seven dollars. Yeah. So and I mean also, that's why it came out because they had all that investment money stashed already. Yeah, I mean people just don't find that fair though. That's the thing, people don't find VCs fair like that VC money fair like yo all these people have private investments before and then as soon as it hit the market like people just don't find much value in that it may have value because of the utility of the blockchain and the ecosystem but as far as like anything else out they just so you and i think a dot's going to go to 50 bucks that's going to go to 100 i was getting all excited and i'm like yeah. look at the token economics but like yo this shit's nasty it's ugly the token economics it's ugly 
Oh. Yeah, I got I got two examples. One of them that that pissed me off was XF uh, FXC because I literally bought into this coin when the market cap was below 10 mil. Market cap went to uh, 300 mil and my portfolio didn't even move. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That much gains and the tokenomics were that bad that the, the, the coin literally went from like f number 300 and something to the top 100. And in my portfolio, the price stayed the same. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. And another, another one, one would be XRP. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, let <laughs> me hear about the XRP, bro. Let me hear about that shit. Oh, okay. another one. Another one is XRP. I mean, I don't really. I got a little bit of XRP that I'm just holding just because I just had it since forever. But, you know, the tokenomics of XRP are just horrible, bro. I, absolutely. And I don't call it XRP. I don't call it XRP. I call it by its government name. Which is Ripple. Ripple. <laughs> I <call it> <laughs> Ripple. You, know? you are Ripple, buddy. Stop trying to change your name. You're Ripple. Yeah, I mean, that, Actually, that, people don't understand when XRP first. Ripple. What? You still there, brother? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, the fact that. Can you hear me? The fact that they, they can go through a rebranding, you can't get any more centralized. Like you can't get any more centralized where, you know what, let's just rebrand the whole thing. New logo, new name. Like, I mean, Bitcoin didn't have to do that. Ethereum didn't have to do that. Like Wi-Fi doesn't, you don't have to rebrand just because your shit is- When you put it this way, when you have to tell, I saw a video where everybody was like an XRP community you know, and I'm not, and this is not throwing no shade on the XRP community at all. You know, no, I'm mean? throwing hella shade. For everybody. I'm throwing hella shade on you. Crypto Roots but, is throwing hella shade on XRP. How the, how the fuck are you still in? <laughs> like, yo, how you, how you gonna, how you gonna be an XRP when you got a, a Wi-Fi? When you got so many cryptos just shitting? Like, get out of that shit. It's, 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 it's a, it's a bad investment. Yeah, hey. I'm, not, I'm not a financial advisor. So that's what we're doing. Okay, just <laughs> all right. I was trying to be, I was trying to be polite, but nah, we man, gonna shit on them. We gonna shit on them, but. I'm How are you holding a coin? How are you holding a coin and getting excited when the founder and CEO, hold on, not founder, when the CEO, that's already bad enough right there, a coin with a CEO. When the CEO makes an announcement that, hey, community, we're going to stop, we're going to stop dumping coins on your head this month. And they're like, yeah, yeah, great for XRP. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, it's. You're going to um, stop dumping on people's heads? <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I don't know. I, it's so it, it's not sad, but damn. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's so, uh, yeah. It's like, and, and that goes to the, Like I said, I, got, I told, I, listen, my boy, he wanted me to buy XRP so bad. And I said, fine. I got 100 XRP. If they don't make me rich... <laughs> Then that means y'all been talking all this crap for no reason. And let me tell you, that hundred XRP is probably like 20 bucks right now. Hey, for all you XRP holders, I'm going to give you a one valuable lesson. Do not marry your so, bags. Do not marry your bags. Yeah, no, of, that is not your girlfriend. A lot of people are. Wife, okay. When it's time to get rid of them, get rid of them and move on to something better. Yeah, don't fall in love with your bags, definitely. That's why I always tell people, I don't even get stuck on one investment too long, you know. And that's something that's a psychological part of it, too. You say, oh, this coin made me so much money already. I don't want to sell it. Or I think this coin is going to do good in the future. Nah, man, if that thing is tanking, there's other things going up. You got to learn to adjust. Like, what's your goal? You know what I mean? To be somebody's number one fan? or to try to make a profit in, in investing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, to me, it's just a bunch of gorillas beating their chest, echo chambering to each other. Yeah, you bought that, I bought it too, ha, ha, ha. You know, it's like, all right, well, what value did it give you or anybody else? And they really can't really uh, articulate anything besides, um, I don't know, it's just, some people just, I don't know, they, they get into investment early and they never want to leave it because they invested too much and they, you know, so yeah, that's where egos. Well, in, in all reality, like yeah. they give their money away to the market. They give their money away to the market, and I don't know. Just XRP people get get off that shit. That shit is like the heroin to me. <laughs> yeah, too much.
too much for one too much too much tribalism too much tribalism over there you yeah. know i mean you can get blind just it, it just like a, a bitcoin maximalist you know you can sit there and you can say that bitcoin is the best and nothing else is going to do nothing but it's like other things are innovating so yeah i like bitcoin too but i would be stupid to ignore the other innovation and the other potential in the rest of the market you know absolutely and that's why you have to be adaptive you know but that's why you do have to be adaptive you do have to have an open mind there's a lot of rugs there's a lot of rug pulls a lot of scams a lot of just shit coins and meme coins and but you know if you may you may be able to spot some gold every now and then you know so it's i understand both sides some people are very conservative when it comes to certain things and some people are way too open and liberal and that causes its own so you do kind of have to walk a fine line of, you know, you know, kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy to explain, you know, it's definitely not easy to explain. But yeah. Once you start doing it, once you start there's recognizing, no, there's no problem. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Once, yeah. Once you start recognizing, you just kind of get good at spotting it. Like some, some, I have a good feeling about this, right? Once you get, once you start to get on that train of confidence and investing, you can kind of, you can kind of like kind of spot the gems, you know, and that's what you really want to be. You just want to, you want to spot, you want to catch the gems, those crypto gems. And, you know, there's various ways to catch these crypto gems and the easiest way is to follow.